since Boris Johnson's uh, speech on Sunday, I think there's been two main reactions from people uh, to what the government's now saying. I think the dominant one is confusion. And I think that sense of confusion has been increased by the fact that instead of criticising the government policy for its substance, the Labour leadership and most of the union leaders have mainly criticised it for being vague, confusing and poorly communicated. I think the second reaction people have had is anger. And people have been angry when they've seen through the confusion and realised what the government is actually proposing. Part of the reason it seems confusing is because there's relatively little change to the substance of the rules. And what the government's relying on is a change in the messaging in an area where the rules were incredibly vague all along. So throughout this lockdown, the government never ordered the closure of most workplaces, only those workplaces where the public, and obviously workers don't count as the public, uh, tended to congregate, such as sh shops and uh, hospitality venues and so on. So millions of people have been at work throughout this, even doing non-essential work. And what the government's done is it's changed the messaging from being a presumption that people should stay at home if they can't, uh, if they're not doing essential work, to a presumption that people should go to work. They haven't made any change to any rules about whether workplaces can open or close. They're leaving it up to employers and to workers to sort that out. And I think part of the reason for that is they want to shift the blame for what happens next onto employers and onto individual workers and, the, and onto the public. And they're going to use employers to try to force people back to work. People will be afraid of losing their jobs, afraid of losing their pay. At the same time, the government's talking about winding down the furlough scheme. People are worried that universal credit could get cut back down to its uh, previous levels and so on. So they're relying on people's fear for their financial future to force people back into unsafe work. And the reality is it is unsafe. The pandemic isn't under control. We've still got death rates that are sky high amongst the worst in the world. We've got a pandemic that isn't under control. We don't know who's infected. Many people are infected without symptoms. We don't know if we're spreading the disease without even knowing we've got it. There are far too many people infected for the government to be anywhere near being able to test, trace and quarantine everybody who's had contact with somebody infected. And that's the precondition for actually containing uh, the virus successfully. What seems to be happening is that uh, they're going back to the original policy of herd immunity. So instead of waiting until the virus is contained, they've seen that the uh, number of people in intensive care with coronavirus has dropped off a bit, that uh, from their point of view though, if you talk to health workers, you might hear a different story. There's spare capacity in the NHS. So they want more of us to get infected uh, so that they can get business back up and running as quickly as possible have their millionaire mates making their profits again. This is absolutely disastrous. We know from the arguments at the start of this what herd immunity would mean. If the majority of us are to get the disease, it means hundreds of thousands of us dying of the disease. And it's absolutely disgraceful if that's what the government does have in mind. Now, in this whole argument, I think schools are absolutely critical because the government is trying to push schools to open before they're safe in order to provide childcare for workers to go back to workplaces that aren't safe. And the idea that schools could be uh, opened up with more pupils uh, in a way that's safe is just ludicrous. How on earth would you ensure proper distancing and safe uh, practices in a school? Can you stop six-year-olds from uh, getting close to each other, from touching their mouths, touching their faces, control what surfaces they touch? Of course not, nobody can. So it's completely impossible uh, to have large numbers of kids back in school without them spreading the infection amongst themselves and bringing it back into homes with vulnerable people back in, the, back in the families and communities, as well as to staff in the schools who may be vulnerable uh, themselves. Thankfully, amongst the best of the reactions uh, to the government announcements have come from some of the education unions, particularly the NEU. And it's quite clear that there's going to be mass opposition to any attempt to reopen schools before it's safe. And good luck to all those teachers who, propose, who don't want to open the schools up, who are fighting against that, and to the heads who are backing them. It's also going to be important what parents do. 
to make sure parents are contacting teachers and schools to support those wanting uh, to refuse to reopen and to put pressure on those who may be considering it. In some schools, parents are getting together virtual meetings to get organised and put pressure on. On Thursday night, there's going to be a meeting, online meeting from people around the country, parents, school kids, teachers and the rest to discuss how we make sure that schools do not reopen and that's kept safe. But that's part of a wider picture for everybody because of course workplace after workplace people will be coming under more pressure not just those who are already working in unsafe conditions there'll be more people being added to that picture it's never been more important for people to join a union and to check out their rights and use them now people do have some legal rights under section 44 and 100 of the employment rights act 1996 employees have the right to refuse to work in conditions that they believe put themselves or others in serious and imminent danger and not to suffer any detriment which means things like having pay docked and or losing their job as a result of doing it. Now of course we know that the law is a weak ally often employers break the law they do things that are illegal and sometimes even if you take them to court it can take years to get a pitiful remedy so no course of action is without risk but people are going to have to take decisions about what risk is worse, the risk of seeing them spread infection to their friends, their families, their loved ones and their communities, or standing up to their employer. But the safest way to do that is in numbers and to do that together. And that's why joining a union and getting organised is critically important. So whatever you have to do to keep yourselves, your families, your communities safe, that's what we're going to have to do. It's clear we've got a fight on our hands and it's clear we can't wait for Labour leadership or most of our union leaders. We have to fight for ourselves.